वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स टू पूरा एजुकेटर द वे डू द सक्सेस फ्रेंड्स टुडे आई एम स्टार्टिंग विद अ न्यू सीरीज ऑफ इंडियन पॉलिटी लेक्चर फर्स्ट हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड हियर द क्वेश्चन अराइजेस व्हाई वी हैव टू रीड द हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ एनी सब्जेक्ट स्पेशली हियर इन इंडियन पॉलिटी वी विल स्टडी अर्लियर हिस्टोरिकल थिंग्स एज हब british ruled on us through their own rules by their laws we'll see in detail why it was needed for the constitution to be formed as we got independence these all things will be seen in detail so let's begin our chapter first historical background as i have promised earlier in how to study indian polity i have said that recently i will be starting with the indian polity series so today i am starting it now friends let's go into the chapter friends before starting the historical background we will do a brief discussion on the laws and regulations which were followed before the formation of the constitution because in the historical background we will see how the constitution was formed or the laws which was established which will help to form the constitution so friends we will go to the rigvedas mauryan period gupta period and mughal period in these periods was there a constitution the answer is no and you will be very surprised because by the constitution we are ruled today the rules and regulations are followed which we follow today and if the constitution was not there at those times then how they were ruled the answer comes that during the Rig rigveda period there were four vedas the people followed four vedas and do their work according to the vedas and during the mauryan periods or gupta period or mughal period king was the head he used to give the rules and regulations which the people have to follow this was the process which was followed earlier now we will see how the today's constitution which we are following was formed let's begin in jotted forms in a chron chronological order so friends now we'll see from the british period how british came to india and what were the following so friends british came to india in 1600 bc as traders and formed their company as a east india company and which got the right of trading from queen elizabeth first who passed the charter for trading and in 1765 company obtained diwani right of three territory that is bengal bihar and odisha now the question may arise what is diwani right diwani right is a right through which the uh, revenue can be extracted or obtained from the regions persons and the civil justice can be given now independently in other words diwani right will be given or is given by the moguls to british so that they will now able to take revenue from bengal bihar and odisha and they will give civil justice to the people living there this was major hamper to the society there because now british will rule directly on them as a east india company now they were head of that region 
now let's see the next point in 1857 sipoi mutiny occurred this was the major event and is known as first war of independence because in this mutiny sipoi's wanted independence from british rule and this hampered the british ruling so that in 1858 british crown directly assumed responsibility on indian territory and east india company were suppressed and removed its identity india was granted independence in 15th august 1947 and then as independence was obtained now the need of the constitution was raised and the this this was raised for the first time by m n roy he was a pioneer of communist movement and it was raised in 1934 for the first time in 1946 constituent assembly was established for the formation of the constitution and on finally 26 january 1950 constitution came to force here we will note some important features various features of the indian constitution and the polity have their roots in the british rule because the british ruled on us for 200 years and this was a large other long period of time uh, through which we were ruled so it was the need for the india to take some rules and regulations from the british rule so that it was very familiar to them for 200 years and in a short period of time how it can be removed so it was very needed so let's begin the chapter here 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 we have completed the brief introduction if we see the historical background it can be divided into two rules the first is the company's rule from 1773 to 1858 and the second is the crown rule which is from 1858 to 1947 at which the independence was obtained the company rule is divided into four parts here which is regulating act of 1773 the second is quits india act 1784 third is charters act 1833 fourth is charter act 1853 this whole company rule will be discussed in very detail in this video and the upcoming slides of the crown rule will be discussing we will be discussing in the next video which will be coming after this friends this the crown rule from 1858 to 1947 and their five sub parts of the act will be discussed in the upcoming video which will be coming soon but here in this video i will be just only naming the acts and the detail will be given in the upcoming video so in the crown rule the first act is government of india act 1858 second is indian council act 1861 third is indian council act 1892 fourth is indian council act 1909 fifth is government of india act 1919 sixth is government of india act 1935 and last one is indian independence act 1947 so friends now 
in the next slide we will be discussing the company rule in very detail and this crown rule will be discussing in the next video let's begin now we will see the chronological order of company rule because crown rule or british rule will be seen in the upcoming video the company rule 1773 to 1858 the first act was regulating act of 1773 this is most important act because it it has been asked for several times in the competitive exams and this act was the first act through which british government put control on the east india company or east india company could rule on us the governor of bengal was converted into governor general of bengal by this act and four member executive council was there to assist him now the governor of bombay and governor of madras presidencies were subordinate to governor general of bengal and he was the supreme head in 1774 by this act supreme court of kolkata was established at that time there was one chief judge and there were three other judges fourth is court of directors were to report the british government for their all actions relating to the revenue civil and military affairs in india has to report to british government next is pitts india act of 1784 the things which were lacking in regulating act of 1773 was improved in the pitts india act now the companies functions were divided into commercial functions and political functions and old body known as court of directors which we have seen in regulating act was fully converted into commercial affairs that means now the court of directors will only see the commercial affairs and new body was established known as board of control which will see all the political affairs of the nation and act also empowered the board of control to supervise and direct all the operations relating to the civil military revenue which was in the british possessions in india we will note here that it was the first time the concept of british possessions in india was established by this act for the company's territory in india second point to be noted here that british government was given the supreme control over the territory of india third act is charter act of 1833 before all the acts were known as regulations from this act all the upcoming acts will be known as acts before that like regulating act and pits india act were regulations and from this act it will be known as acts it is very important to note here friends charter act of 1833 converted the governor general of bengal into governor general of india the governor general of bengal which was established by regulating act of 1773 will be converted into governor general of india 
and which will have the civil and military powers. Now, the governors of Bengal and Madras presidencies will be deprived of the legislative powers which they have earlier. Now, it will be taken here. From this act ended East India Company's commercial functions and it will be now totally the administrative body and for the first time open competition for the selection and recruitment of civil servants was attempted to introduce and which do not include Indians but it was it was opposed in the control board so it was not able to be enforced next now let's see the next point friends next act is charter act of 1853 it separated the governor general's council into executive council and legislative council and it also provided six members which were known as councillors. Legislative Council was also known as Indian Central Legislative Council which acted as a mini parliament and adopting the same procedures as the British Parliament had. Friends, this act finally introduced an open competitive system for the recruitment of the civil servants and in this Indians were also included. Mekele committee, the committee on the Indian civil services was established in 1854. Therefore, Mekele is known as the father of civil services and it extended the company's rule that means from now onwards company's rule can be taken anytime for the first time local representation as indian central legislative council out of this six new legislative members governor general council four members were appointed from the madras Bombay, Bengal and Agra presidencies. Out of the six, four will be taken from these four territories. Friends, here we have completed our polity first lecture. I will be coming with the next lecture will be lecture 1.1 and it will be completing this historical background chapter completely in a very short period of time so friends bye and take care thank you friends for your great support please subscribe to our channel pura educator the way to the success it is a youtube channel if you like the channel please press the thumb button and share with your friends and please press the notification buttons so that if you press the subscribe button, you get the videos in the continuous space. That means you will get the videos when I upload it. So friends, thank you for your great support once again. Take care and bye.